In this video we're going to create toolpaths to cut the lioness part that we created in the modeling section of this tutorial. Once we've opened the file we're going to create a boundary that we'll use for the toolpath calculations by editing some of the vectors that we used in the modeling process. Then we're going to check the height of our component, go over and adjust our material setup before calculating 3D roughing, 3D finishing and a 2D profile cutout toolpath. We'll preview these and then show you how you can save them in order to have the data that you'd need to send to the CNC machine in order to cut this job. Let's start by opening a new copy of the software. Let's go ahead and click on the link to open an existing file and from the project folder we're going to select the file lioness-model.crv3d. This is the Aspire part that we created in the modeling section of this tutorial. With that selected, I'm going to hit the Open button. And now we need to prepare this part for machining. So what we want to do is check its size and the height of the components. And then we also need to have a vector that goes around the outside of the part that we can use for a machining boundary. Now we could take our component and we could fit a vector around the outside of it. But in this case, we actually already have really good quality vectors that we use to create our components. So if we take a copy of those, then we should be able to merge them together in order to create a nice clean vector boundary. So we can see more clearly what's happening. Let's come down, click on the modeling tab, and I'm just going to undraw my component by unchecking it in the component tree. Next, we're going to select all the vectors that are part of the silhouette of the model. Let's start by clicking on the tail, hold the shift key down and select the outer vector for the leg, select the outer vector for the body, carefully select the outer vector for the front leg and select the outer vector for the head as well. With all those selected I'm going to right mouse click in the 2D view, choose the option to copy to layer and then pick new layer from the bottom of that submenu. For the new layer we'll call this toolpath boundary. I'm going to make it visible and active and hit OK. So now we've made a copy of each of those vectors. I'm going to come onto the Layers tab. I'm going to switch off all the layers by clicking on the light bulb at the top here and then just switch on that last layer that we just created, which is also still our active layer. Now I'm going to come down to the Drawing tab and with all these vectors still selected in the 2D view, I'm going to come over and click on the icon to weld them together in order to create a single vector that represents the silhouette of our part. Next we want to check the height of our component and then we'll be ready to go ahead and start calculating the toolpaths. Let's come back to the modeling tab, let's click on the icon to tile the window so we can see the 2D and the 3D view. You can see at the moment we don't have any components visible. I'm going to click back on the second component that we've got here, Lioness Edit Baked, which is our finished model that we created. And now with that drawn, so we can see that in the 3D view, so that's our composite model, I'm going to come up and click on the icon here to scale the Z height of model. Within here I'm going to click the button to set exact height and I'm going to specify the height of the model to be 3 eighths of an inch, 0.375 and hit apply. And you see very subtly that just scaled slightly down in the 3D view there. Most importantly now I know the top of my model is at 3 eighths of an inch high and this is going to help us when we come to set up the material in a moment. Let's hit OK. So now we have a vector that goes around the outside of our 3D model. We've scaled our 3D model, we know the size and the height of that model and so we can click on the icon here to switch to the toolpath tab. That will minimize my design tab over on the left, toolpath tab opens on the right and the first thing we need to do before we calculate any toolpaths is to check our material setup. So we're going to come up to the top of the toolpath tab and under where it says material setup I'm going to click the set button. We originally had a part set up to cut from the top of the block which is fine into three quarter inch material. Now I know my model is only three eighths of an inch thick so I'm actually going to reduce the material I'm going to use down to half an inch going to leave the Z0 set to the top of the block, and the XY datum set to the lower left corner. That means the lower left position on my model will be the X0, Y0 position on my CNC. Next we need to position the 3D object within the thickness of material. 
Software tells me my model thickness is 3 eighths of an inch. At the moment the model is pushed completely to the top of my material block. It's normally a good idea to have a small gap above the model to allow for any inconsistency in the flatness of the material or how you set up the Z0. So I'm actually going to enter a value of 0.25 in this case because I know with the size of my block and the size of my model that will leave me with 0.1 inches of extra stock below the 3D object. That will be added to the part when it's cut out. The bottom here we then just need to check our rapid Z gaps and our home position. I'm going to set the rapid gaps to be 0.25. That means the software will pull the tool out a quarter of an inch above the block if it needs to move to a new position on the table. You need to make sure this value is high enough to clear any clamps or other obstacles which are above your block of material. And for the home position I'm going to set it to start at X0, Y0 and Z0.5. Let's go ahead and hit OK now and we're ready to start calculating toolpaths. If you plan to cut this part, you need to make sure that your material setup and all the toolpath parameters you use are appropriate for your machine, material and tooling that you're going to cut it with. Whenever we calculate a toolpath, even for 3D objects, then we need to make sure we have a vector selected that represents either the boundary or the shape we want to follow. In this case, we're going to do a 3D roughing and 3D finishing, so we're going to use the vector as the boundary. I'm going to select the one that we just created by welding together those different shapes. Once we've got that selected in the 2D view, I'm going to come over and click on the icon to go into the 3D roughing toolpath. The roughing is used to hog out the majority of the material before we come back with a finishing tool. In this case, because we have a fairly shallow contoured part, I'm going to use a ball nose tool in order to rough this and a 3D raster roughing strategy. Let's come up and click on select and from the tool database I'm going to select the quarter inch ball nose tool and hit OK. Now because this ball nose is normally set up for finishing I'm going to hit the edit button and I'm going to change the step over. That would take a very long time for me to cut this with a 10% step over. That's more of a finishing step over. So I'm going to change this to 40%. And that'll only override this for this particular toolpath because we use the edit button rather than editing the data in the tool database itself. Next, the machining allowance, which is the skin that's going to be left on top of our model so that we have a difference between the rough and the finish. We make sure we avoid any chance of chipping the part. We're going to leave 0.03 inches, so I'll take the value that we've got there. As I said, we're going to use this 3D raster roughing strategy here, which is rather than the Z level. And in this case, I think I might choose to go along the Y direction. So we'll machine across the part like this. The boundary vector offset is a value that's going to force the tool past the edge of the vector we've got selected. And that's important because by default the software just sends the center of the tool to this vector. And when we've got a raised object like this we want it to go past by at least the radius of the tool so it machines down the side of our component. So I'm going to enter a boundary vector offset which is at least the radius of the tool plus my machining allowance to make sure the tool has space to get down there. So I'm going to enter a value here of 0.16 inches. Now we could change the name of this if we wanted to to something that we're going to recognize and hit calculate and now we can see the roughing toolpath that we've generated there. Now at the moment this seems to be taking quite a lot of steps so what I might want to do at this point is just double check my settings. So I'm going to double click on the toolpath and hit edit and I can see that the pass depth is set to one eighth of an inch. That means it's going to take a cut every eighth of an inch as it's going through the part. I can afford to be more aggressive with this tool so I'm going to set the pass depth to 0.25, hit OK and then just hit the calculate button to recalculate that. So now we're actually cutting that in two passes rather than the three that we had before. Software's automatically opened the preview toolpath form here. Now I can click on the button preview selected toolpath and we can see what the roughing is going to give me. So you can see how that's going to machine away the majority of the material in the part. Next I'm going to hit close on the preview toolpath menu. I'm going to make sure my vector is still selected. I'm going to click on the icon for 3D finish toolpath. And for this I'm going to hit select and I'm going to choose a 1 8 ball nose tool to make sure we get all the detail. And hit edit there and just check the step over. Step over is 10% which is a good finishing step over. 
I'm going to set the feed rate up to 100, plunge to 50 for this. Again, you just need to make sure that's safe for whatever material you're cutting. And in this case, I'm going to do a raster strategy, and I might also enter a raster angle of 90 degrees, so that will cut across the part like the roughing did. Boundary vector offset needs to be at least the radius of the tool again to allow the tool to come and cut down the sides of our component. So 0 0.08 inches is a reasonable value. And then we'll change the name if we want for the toolpath. Hit calculate. Software will display that for us. I may want to maximize the 3D view. And then we can come up and click on the button to preview selected toolpath. Just give the software a couple of seconds. And now I can see what my part's going to look like after we machine it with that 1 8 inch ball nose tool. If I'm happy with that, then we can hit close and we're ready to do our cutout toolpath. I'm going to go up to view, tile the windows vertical, make sure my vector is still selected, come up and click on the icon to profile toolpath. I'm going to cut all the way through the material, so we'll set this to a cut depth of 0 0.5 inches. I'm going to hit select and start by using a quarter inch end mill. Hit OK. I'm going to cut outside of the vector here. I'm not going to add tabs. I'm going to assume we have a way to hold the part down and we'll call this profile line S and hit calculate. Now I can see if I look in the 3D view there that I appear to have a gap under the chin of the model and that may be that the tool is not able to fit through there. We can double check that if we want by using the preview. So with the toolpath selected there, I'm going to click preview selected toolpath and I can see that there is actually going to be some material left there if we try and cut this out with a quarter inch end mill. What I need to do is use a smaller tool if I want to cut all the way around there when we do the profile pass. So while I'm still in the preview here, I'm going to click the undo last so we can go back and hit close. We can select the toolpath, click on the icon to edit it or we could have double clicked it as well as we did before. And I'm going to change the tool, I'm going to hit select, and we'll use a 1 8 end mill in this case, and hit OK. And then we can take the same parameters, machining outside of the part, don't need to change the name, hit calculate. Now I can see that that should fit in there, and again we can double check by clicking on the button to preview selected toolpath. That looks much better, I can see now that the tool is going all the way around there in order to cut the part out. If we wanted to, we could delete the waste material to visualize this more clearly. So I can double click on the waste material. We could even carefully zoom in and double click on the waste material under the chin there. Now we can see how our part's going to look like when we run our three toolpaths. And as long as we're happy with that at this stage, then we could go ahead and output those to center the CNC. To do that, we can just hit close here, select the first toolpath, the roughing toolpath, hit save, choose an appropriate post processor from the list here, either for your machine or for your control software, and then hit the save button, give that toolpath a name, hit save, choose this one, hit save, give that toolpath a name and hit save, and then do the same for the profile toolpath, we'll be able to transfer those over to the CNC machine, cut them in the right order, making the correct tool changes in between each one, and resetting the Z0 in between each toolpath as well and that would cut the part that we saw when we looked at this in the preview. At this point, we're pretty much finished with working through this example. So I'm going to click on File, go to Save As, and in the Project folder I'm going to save this file, call it lioness-tp. TP is just an indicator I use to show that it's got toolpaths in the file, and hit Save. So if you wanted to, you could open the file in the state that it's in in the project at the moment. Let's take a moment to summarize some of the things we've looked at. We started by opening a file that we'd created in the modeling section of this tutorial. The first thing we needed to do was create a vector we could use as a toolpath boundary. So we took some of the vectors in the part that we'd used in the modeling process, copied them onto another layer, and then welded them together in order to get the silhouette. We then edited the height of our component, went over to the toolpaths tab, checked our material setup, and with our boundary vector selected, calculated 3D roughing and 3D finishing toolpaths, followed by a 2D profile cutout in order to create the part. 
We then showed you how you could save these to send those files to your CNC machine and finish by saving the Aspire file itself. And that concludes this video.